All right, today is the day. And if you remember from last episode, we pulled this clamshell from the mold and uh, started fitting it. Now it is getting a little closer to being perfectly fit, ready to drill for hinging. But it did allow us to have this in place so that we know where these upper braces for the subframe, and you're gonna see that in just a moment. But now that's in place, we were able to locate those, make sure there wasn't any interference problems with this clamshell. But that's our project this week. Let's go take a look at it. Now to do this brace, we're gonna to have to create a couple of brackets at each end to hold it. And at the subframe level, we've got these uh, water jet cut plates that are gonna be welded to a steel tube to uh, attach to two different points on the subframe. So I'm taking out with the press and putting some 90 degree bins. And these bins are gonna hold some bolts that will have some other sheet metal for the rear crash section bolted to it. And one of those tabs couldn't fit it in, don't have a finger break, so doing it with a crescent wrench. The other end of the bracket is going to be these tubes. One of the tubes is going to um, be seated against uh, one of the main cross tubes on the subframe. So we're going to just take a hole saw, notch it out to fit on that subframe. The other end is going to be exposed, like I said, to accept some sheet metal for the rear crash structure. So I've just got some round discs that I'm going to weld some nuts to to create some captured nuts on the end of that tube that that bolting will take place on. And I'm setting this thing up to weld those caps on and then I decide I think that I might just flip this thing over and do it upside down. It's gonna be a little bit easier that way. Tack weld that thing and go ahead and weld those end caps in place, like the end caps with a captured nut on the backside. Now once this thing's welded, I also need to go back and grind these welds off to be smooth back to the diameter of the tube because that tube needs to slide between the two parts of that bracket and as it slides in the sheet metal part of the bracket needs to sit perfectly level like i said that's going to hold the crash structure also going to be the point where the rear clamshell comes down and seats on a couple of rubber mounts but to hold this thing all together, I'm going to clamp that uh, sheet metal onto that tube. Got a little level on top, just working, trying to get that thing level. Make sure the bird mouth of the one tube is fitting on the cross frame on the subframe. And then I think I realize here that that little level wasn't worth the, its weight. Go get a good level, get that thing so I can see once it's zoomed right in. Tighten up that clamp. Got it perfect. Now it's ready to take that out and weld it all together. Now this subframe needs to be strong enough, like I said, to hold this front brace to push against what will be the roll bar structure in the bulkhead. And it's gonna hold, like I said, the whole crash structure, the aluminum sheet metal work that's going to be in the back, like I said, is the crash structure. Now to get my final fit on this things, there is a little bit of an interference problem with the exhaust system here. And I just realized that I never tightened the whole thing back up. Once it was tightened up, I got my clearance I need. Slide those uh, brackets into place where they're going to be. And then I need to take a trial fit on the clamshell. Make sure that I'm going to be able to fit the the upper tubes of this uh, brace and they are going to run through this part of the clamshell that comes up and uh, makes that transition slope back from the roof. Now a lot of this uh, fitting here seems to be pretty tight but I haven't gone back and trimmed out all this uh, fiberglass once it came out of the mold but there it is we've got looks like a good clearance be going up there. So the other end is also going to need a bracket that's going to bolt to the unidirectional fibers that we've created our roll structure in the bulkhead. I've got these uh, aluminum quarter inch pieces of plate all water jet cut out to make our upper bracket. Just weld it all together here.
Now bring it in, we're gonna take it and just drill a pilot hole. This is the true diameter of the holes. We'll actually uh, drill them later once the laminations are all complete, but this hole will just be there, left there to be our guide to put our first hole in. Once we've got those laminations done, but we're just gonna put a little quarter 20 bolt in this thing to hold in place so we know the position in the end. Take a measurement off it. We're going to go to the other side and set the other side up as well. And now, once we got these two brackets uh, temporarily bolted in place for our trial fit, we're also going to go back and get the the bushed rod ends and fit those into place. And on the wood, on the rod end, we're going to thread on our welding bung. It's going to be welded to the tube in the end that goes between these two brackets. Back to the other bracket. Put in that bushed rod end. Seems like we've got a nice tight fit. It's two inches, the same as the tubing, but that's a little bit tight. I think I better adjust this thing, put a little bend out on it when we... Uh, get it finished. Otherwise, once this thing's powder coated, we're going to have a heck of a time getting that rod end back in there. Okay. With the bungs about three quarters into position so that we have some adjustment room, take a measurement, go out and cut myself a piece of uh, chromoly tubing, fit the weld bungs into place, slide them into the brackets, get our first test fit, just to make sure, like I said, that we have enough thread on each of these rod ends so that we can make adjustments in the end. Everything look good. Take it back out to the bench and uh, weld it up. Now some of these pieces I'm probably gonna have to take off somewhere to uh, have powder coated. I don't have a big enough oven to fit this uh, 40 inch tube or the subframe. Thinking of uh, Possibly doing a paint job on this powder coating. People could comment, tell me what they think the benefits of a powder coating versus a good paint coating on this subframe would be. But once those uh, braces are in place, we're going to retry our clamshell. We want to make sure we do have some clearance in there. Like I said, if those uh, upper braces were touching that clamshell, there'd be some noise vibration rattling, maybe some wear through. We don't want that. So get it all fitting pretty close to where it's going to be in the finally in the end. Take a look down there and looks like perfect. Plenty of clearance, about a half an inch on the inside. Good. To okay. So there you go. That gives us our upper braces. That pretty much ties up most of the major components on the rear subframe. Only thing left now is, um, some small pads for securing some things, like we'll have the fuel tank on that side, um, air compressor on this side, lots of little tabs for things like brake lines and electrical to hold those things place securely. And that's gonna tie up most of the rear subframe, like I said. Only thing left is to go back and finish up, touch up all the welds so that thing's ready to uh, powder coat or paint when we get that ready to pull it all apart again. We'll be now moving up to the front subframe to try to finish up some of that. And of course, there's always lots of composite work still to go and little components. Been doing a lot of design lately, um, working on the transfer case, door hinges and things like that. Some pieces I need to cast and sit some metal fabrication in those. But anyway, that's our wrap for this week. We do have some other interesting things coming into the shop. So hope you make sure you uh, subscribe ring the little notification bell, and that you'll have those things prompted to you when they become available. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and come back and see us again.